Deputy Mitchell, 30 seconds. Mr. Mahogut, um, my question is to ask the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs her plans for reducing the cost of childcare over the coming years. Her response to the Economic and Social Research Institute's recent report, which found high childcare costs are a major obstacle to many women re entering the workforce, and if she will make a statement on the matter. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, I welcome the ESRI report highlighting the challenges that childcare costs present for families in Ireland, particularly for women who wish to return to or remain in work, providing a childcare infrastructure that enables accessible, affordable, quality childcare is a cornerstone of my work as the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs. I've stated on numerous occasions that the cost of childcare is not a problem that can be fixed over a single budget. Ireland has seen low levels of investment in this area for many decades, tailing the levels of investment across Europe and the OECD. We have started to address this underinvestment over the past three budgets, with investment increased by some 80% since 2015. However, I acknowledge there is still a long way to go, and in order to fully address the cost of childcare, we need continued investment in our childcare infrastructure. And this investment will in turn reap dividends for our country by enabling women who wish to work to do so, and in doing so, boosting our economy. Just before the summer recess, I was delighted to be able to put entitlement of families to financial support for childcare on a legislative footing. That's the first time in the history of the state. It came about with the passing of the Child Care Support Act. So the, child care, the affordable child care scheme will mark a major turning point in the subsidization of child care in this country. It will enable us to pass on to parents whatever investment the exchequer can make available to lower the child care costs. And now that the legislation for this scheme is in place, we are focusing on the development of the IT and administrative infrastructure for the scheme, and this work is continuing apace. And I hope to report to government uh, on a time frame shortly uh, for this project. To assist parents and families in the interim, as I referred to already, I put in place measures last September to provide a non-means-tested subsidy of up to 1,040 per year for children aged between six months uh, and the time at which they are eligible for ECHI, and we also enhance subsidies for families that need it most for 50, by 50 percent, up to 145 years per week for children up to 15 years of age. So these and many other measures, I think, uh, are supporting that objective in terms of ensuring that more women are able to return to work. Deputy Mitchell. We've seen in recent weeks the number of surveys taking place on the cost of childcare. Childcare costs have actually risen by 5.5% in this state. Now, I recognise you yourself have said this is a problem due to lack of funding by this state over many years. The cost of childcare is crippling working families. They're paying the equivalent of second mortgages, which is putting huge pressure on family life. And despite the subsidies, costs are still growing up, going up. Minister, at the end of August, you said that the investment levels identified by the Irish Congress of Trade Unions in their budget submission was necessary. Minister, can you confirm that the government investment in the early child care and education will meet 0.7% of GDP in the short term and 1% by 2017, by, sorry, 2027, as advised by the ICTU? Well, Thank you very much, Deputy. I think uh, really the primary focus of that question has to do with where is Ireland in relation to other countries in terms of the investment in childcare, therefore reducing the costs of it. Um, and it's a critical question. And yes, I do support um, research that demonstrates that we're not there yet. I think that's really important. Uh, it helps me in my negotiations uh, for, with this government to increase that investment, even though, I, as I've already indicated, the investment has increased over 80 percent over the past uh, three years, um, and, and as well, it is really important for ICTU and other advocates um, to identify that we, are, are, we still need a long way to go in terms of our investment in order to reach um, uh, what, what are uh, more appropriate levels if we compare ourselves with the OECD. Um, it does compare currently the investment uh, um, uh, to
to uh, every, every in, in, the investment compares poorly to other European countries where the OECD average is at 0.8%. It does fall short of the UNICEF recommended investment level of 1% of GDP. But every 0.1% of GDP increase in public expenditure in Ireland will cost an additional 300 million. So that just, I think, identifies the length of time that we need to go. I am right in the middle of my negotiations with Minister Dunafu, and I am determined to get as much as I can towards that this time round. Final supplementary. Thank you, and thank you, Minister, for your response. And, Minister, if I can just talk to you about, uh, I was very surprised by some of your government colleagues um, talking about the so-called granny grant rather than investment into the childcare system. And I was glad, Minister, that many of us here in the chamber were of the same opinion of yourself, so we support you in any way regarding that. But, Minister, we all know, as women here, that the barriers for women returning to work is childcare costs. And I just want to, if I can touch on you, have you any targets going into your discussions with the Minister? Do you want to, on average, are you looking at reducing it by 50% over two years, ten years? So if you could give us an indication of what you're looking at. Thank you. In response, Bum Joanne. Okay, thank you. Well, um, uh, Deputy, thank you for that question. I, I'm really not at liberty to say exactly how much money I'm looking for from the Minister for Finance, but what I will say, and I think this is an equally important response to your question, is that the two main barriers, if we're looking at the issue of women re-entering re -entering the workforce when it comes to childcare, uh, yes, of course, we're, we're talking about costs, though, but I think it also has to do with capacity in the school age sector. Uh, you know, as you know, we have uh, we're in, we, we now have two years of free preschool, um, but that doesn't move into uh, after school. Um, uh, and and of course, if women want to return to work, even part time work, sometimes that gets in the way uh, in terms of not having the supports required in terms of after school. So we need to build the capacity, and also, quite frankly, very straightforward, the lack of transport from schools to after school facilities that are preventing women who wish to return to work to to return to work. So I have those, some of those two key, very practical issues in mind uh, in terms of what it is that's required and the money, therefore. But we, yes, we need money, but money to do what? And so there's a focus, I can at least say that, there's a focus on some of those issues in order to ensure uh, the concern around women returning to work.